So yeah, let's uh let's have a looky here at Sunstone Templar Lion R. We still gotta run the good stuff. Wimblade Adept, Sunstone Templar, Holy Immolation, Lasting Judgment, Fire Spitter. Just dropping a ranged unit in a corner sounds so disgusting. Could we get away with Ether Master White Widow? Because we could just throw that down in a corner as well. That's if Sunstone Templar survives. I wonder if that if that's what this deck wants to be. Frostbone Naga was apparently the tech with Stunstone Templar. It makes it a lot easier to make it so it doesn't damage your own face. We can run the Rejuvenators. It is persistent, yes. If we just play Sunstone Templar on turn one or, or combo it, then we just get to play our units wherever we want. So it opens up like a very interesting style of play where you can threaten your opponent around a lot of different angles, especially with like Dancing Blades and stuff. Zen Rui, I imagine, could be really strong with Templar. Because we're playing a deck where all of our stuff is good, but then with Airdrop, it becomes even better, right? Storm Aratha is very strong with Airdrop. Rook! Rook! Hey, God! <laughs> Rook! If we get Sunstone Templar to... Yes! Yes, chat! Yes! If we get Sunstone Templar to stick, we get to uh, annihilate someone with Rook. I cannot wait. That's a nine mana combo. We can do it. We can do it. We can do control Rook combo. Hang on a second. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bissian versus... Lion hmm. I'm gonna keep Martyrdom. Deal with like Blood Moon Priestess or Shadow Dancer. Ooh, they're trying to go for the high roll. I'm gonna play Silver Guard Knight on the mana tile. It's a full trade for them, but then they'd have to give up mana to do it. So it's a little bit better for me. And the positioning here of this forward Wraithling means that if I uh, greed the mana, then they do ramp, ramp, play, play. So yeah, don't forget to end your turn. I guess they're thinking about what to replace. If you're a busy and this is actually still really good for you because you can punch Spectral Blade, walk forward, clear, offset the damage, and then still ramp. Or Night Sorrow. Dang, you didn't have anything? Terrible shame. Second Gloom Chaser. Glad I put those Tempests in. Oh no. Right, right of the Undervault is a uh, burn. Ugh, there's Tempest. I feel like I can almost get away with not Tempesting. Um, it's better for me to step down because of the general. I think. Step here, step there. Play Windblade Adept, pass. My opponent's still on four, so no Dancing Blade threat here. We got some value out of the Silver Guard Knight, so if they do have Spectral Blade or Night Sorrow, it's not the end of the world, I think. Grasp is also pretty spooky. So then they clear this, and they're a little bit ahead, right? Just Grasp, and then trade, trade, trade. Then you can play a three drop. No, that's probably not worth. Abyssia doesn't have good enough three drops to justify a line like that. Ugh. It's not a good soul shatter either. Their hand must be very bad. That's just for board clear. I guess it's solid. Take center. Punch healing mystic, maybe? Cool. Um. Silver Guard Knight, Fire Spitter. And again, this can only attack General, so it's not that good versus Abyssian, ironically, because you usually want to like control the Wraithlings instead. 
Oh man, that's so tragic. And they have to play the Rust Crawler out early. So if I get Arclight Regalia, it's super good. We do have to worry about the Shadow Watcher though. No, I have Lasting Judgment. We're fine. Wow, this is a uh, this is rough for my opponent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go face twice first to pop this Horn of the Forsaken. And then the Silver Guard Knight can uh No, I actually don't care about clapping the Wraithling. Did my opponent just not get a Wraithling off of the Horn of the Forsaken? Ah, oh, they finally got the Night Sorrow. That's tragic. Maybe running Fire Spitter actually isn't that good. I think the trick is to play Sunstone Templar and drop Fire Spitter in the corner behind your opponent. So that way they have to walk back to deal with it potentially. And then that plays, that sets up for Rook. All right, so Rook can pop off here. We rock down and play Rook here. It'll be one, two, three, just deals three. Units can block Wraithling spawns with Horn. No, no, if you fully surround, yeah, the uh, the horn won't summon, but it will always summon it on an open file first, an open tile, so I, I'm not sure exactly what, why that happened. I, for, I, I'd have to maybe look at it again. Maybe they they had one less charge than I thought with the Horn of the Forsaken. But I think they were supposed to get one more Wraithling. So maybe a bug kind of crept in somewhere where it can choose the same spot. You hit with the Fire Spirit? Yes, I did. Wait, so Horn of the Forsaken only works when the general counterattacks? Okay, that's what it is. I'm, mi I'm misremembering the exact wording on the, the Flame Spitter. That's why. On the Horn of Forsaken, I mean. Rust Crawler going on an epic quest. I can martyrdom to move this out of the way. Heals my opponent for six, and they get all the Wraithlings. I'd probably want to combine that with the Tempest if I go for that line. <laughs> magnetize would be absolutely hilarious. Walk up or walk here, magnetize this out of the way, walk down, play Rook. I don't have, and I do have mana for it as well. Yep. Unfortunately, the, the Rook is just not too good. Miss Lethal? What's the Lethal there, chat? Naga Immo? Oh. We step around for six? Oh, yeah, I guess it was. Naga Spitter Holy. Yeah. That's the second time I've done that. Focusing on clearing the board rather than going for a uh, Lethal play. The good news is that if we get Sunstone Templar, we can get a Rook lethal. <laughs> Come on, Sunstone Templar. Let's see it for the stream. Sunstone Templar. Ah, man. Terrible shame. Man. Actually, let me see. I can do Punch. Healing Mystic Rook to deal three. Yeah, it's not enough. I could walk all the way back and then even Tempest would have been lethal. Tempest or or Sunstone Templar would have set up the Rook lethal. It's still just Naga Immo. I keep forgetting about the two damage from the Naga. I'm so bad. I'm so, oh my God. I'm struggling chat. Vitruvian versus Lionar. All right, we got Fire Spitter. Lasting Judgment. Eh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Double Rook.
Oh, yeah, we got to do the weekly challenge. Yeah. Are we playing chess? Uh, we could play some chess. We got two rooks. I get it now. But yeah, we maybe could play some chess. That's another game that melts your brain. I'm only 800 rated, though. So the game should be pretty easy, right? Go, fire spitter. Harass my opponent with two damage every turn. My opponent can do double ramp sand howler. Triple ramp, actually. A lot of, that's a lot of mana. Wow, that's, I think you're overreacting to the fire spitter if you want to rush his curse there. Don't, oh no, I was gonna say, please don't overextend into the Tempest. Them using the Rosh's Curse early lets me Arclight Regalia pretty safely. Are they gonna Smork? Wow, very aggressive. Whenever I lose to Petruvian, it always seems like they play really disrespectfully into certain cards and I just don't have them. I like the trade there. I do, I do I do like the trade there, however. Regalia angle sounds correct, but with the Dervish plus the Dream Gazer, the threat of Rosh's curse number two could be pretty rough. Probably just better to hit. Eh, no, if I if I had a if I had a three drop, then it might be better. I'll just do Arc Light Regalia. Because I can maneuver like this to make it harder for him to block to uh, clear the artifact. Since they already played a Rasha's Curse, maybe we can be the one that disrespects a bit. They can take two ch two charges off if they want to punch with their general here. Plus Bone Swarm. Seeing the Dream Gazers, the Ether Master, I wonder if this is like an inner oasis idea, which would make it feel even worse if I do, since I don't have the Tempest. Yeah, it looks like they're going for the Regalia break rather than inner oasis here. Yep, just as I predicted. We have healing though, so it's kind of fine. Is it better for me to step down one or to maintain my position? It's better for me to stay on this space because of Blast. Forcing my opponent to play a unit off of the center gives me more options for maybe outmaneuvering it. Yeah, then I'll just play Rejuvenator here and Healing Mystic behind. That way they don't get the Dream Gazer double trade into Rejuvenator and then Dancing Blades on Healing Mystic, which was kind of the, the line I was most worried about. They could very easily just have like first wish trade and then like punch punch. Third wish. It's a strong tempo play, but I mean, that's most of your turn and I'm not under a lot of threat. So that's fine. Dream Gazer, Oasis, Maw for great tempo with Locust and Zariel. Oh yeah, that could be a fun one. Wings of Paradise is lit. Third Wish means that you can actually not take damage from Dream Gazer as well. So we take center. And now, the Gambit. We play Sunstone Templar in that corner. I'm not gonna punch because of Bone Swarm. Gotta try to keep myself healthy from this position. We're playing it here to force them to walk back to try to deal with this. And then we get him with the Rook. <laughs> I just tuned in and Sunstone Templar Rook. Yes, we're, <laughs> we're trying it, Marklar. <laughs> we haven't gotten it to line up yet, but we're gonna try.
I just need my opponent to walk backwards. They aren't falling for it, though. We do have the uh, airdrop Naga. Hmm. I mean, I could just walk here, trade with Dancing Blades. Secretly want to play the Silver Guard Knight here, but then I'm locking my opponent down. I actually want to give them an option to walk this way. I can do Naga and then trade into the Ether Master. Because they're running Wings of Paradise, there might be White Widow in that deck as well. Oh, now, yes! Now you have to walk this way. I could have moved the Mystic first to keep it alive. You're right. Now you've got to come this way. Come on. What about the Fire Spinner? Come on. You got to answer this range shooting. I should have played it here. I should have debated harder. <laughs> I should have played it right here. <laughs> it's like, come on. Take the bait. Oh, well, we've got Rook for one, two, three, four damage. It's not good enough. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it's not enough. <sighs> Dang it. I can do Arc Light Sentinel Holy Immolation. We die to uh, Zion's third wish, plus some other stuff. Dang. I, d I want the Rook lethal so badly. You have no idea. All right, we're alive. So I can do Emerald Rejuvenator, Holy Immolation, Punch. No. I guess it's Rejuvenator, Holy Immolation, Trade, Trade. Another Lady Lock. Is this it, chat? <laughs> do, we, do, we, are we, do we make it work? Play Rook here. One, two, three, four, five. No, you're walking away, damn it! <laughs> I need my opponent to play into my, my stuff. Did I cast all three holy evolutions already? Dag nabbit. Um, so I can trade here. Rook to remove dervish, maybe? I can play the rook and it'll walk all the way over here to clear this. And then I can punch here, punch here, then Sunstone Templar to try to protect. But I mean, I can also do, uh, Punch here, Arc Light Sentinel, Dancing Blades. Because I still have airdrop on it. So there is the trade third wish line. My opponent did show us the third wish. Very tragic.
My opponent's drawn a lot of cards in this game with the second wish and the first wish. Dream Gazer Ether Master also lets them see more of their deck while also developing board, which is pretty nice. We aren't getting lethal yet, so maybe they're only running one third wish, which it actually kind of makes sense. Third wish is kind of like having Entropic Decay, the way it functions. Just trade a couple points of HP to deal with a big thing. First wish means no time maelstrom as well, which is super important. Is it a quick maths? Oh, dominate will, okay. All right, the prophecy has been fulfilled. Finally, chat, it's time. <laughs> yes, get him. <laughs> he didn't do an animation. He just looked at him and he died. Come on. What, what a rip. What a rip off that was. Come on. He just looked at him. <laughs> I think that's the first recorded Rook lethal, though, in Duelist 2, so I'll take it.